Hello, my friends. It's me, Veronica Drake, and I'm coming to you with this week's Divine Download with a bit of a somber energy. Now, before I get started with the download, I want to share something very personal with you. I take to heart every download that comes in. I hear the message in it for me. I'm not somebody that thinks it's for everyone else and not for me. I do the work just like I offer you up the opportunity to do the work. And this week was no different. I came into this message through the doorway of the realization that I might have an addiction. And as I got this message and I stepped back and I looked at myself, I realized that I was putting my head in the sand, making excuses, creating my own definitions, when in reality, I was playing helpless and playing the victim. And those of you that know me, if there's anything I detest, it's helplessness. Now, let me clarify something. I'm sharing this because I am always committed to showing up, being authentic, being truthful, being an inspiration, and being the teacher. And I've always said, the teacher teaches what they most need to learn. And so I want to share my story quickly with you before the download. Many of you know I was raised in a household where my father uh, was an alcoholic, a uh, raging alcoholic, meaning he got volatile, he could not stand up. I spent many of Christmases cleaning up his vomit, um, watching him struggle because he was so hungover. I spent many, many times watching him make an ass out of himself with anger because of his drinking. My mother was also an alcoholic, along with her mental illness. With her alcoholism, I didn't so much witness it because my mother was gone from the home um, more than she was there. But uh, in conversations with my mother, I learned that her alcoholism um, led her to be promiscuous led her to sell herself literally and figuratively. And I'm here to tell you that I don't fit into those definitions at all, not by any stretch of the imagination. What I do fit into is every single night without fail for the last I'll say year, maybe. I've had wine. I love me some red wine. Not just any red wine. It has to be good quality red wine. So I was saying, well, it's got to be good quality. It's expensive. It can't be an addiction. Well, every night I would pour my glass of red wine. And some of you have even seen me come to the class with a glass of red wine. Nothing wrong, right? Well. Here I am, I do not get drunk, meaning I don't get tipsy, I don't get nasty, I don't get overly giddy or happy, I just don't. I do, however, have my red wine every single night. And what started out as a glass of red wine has worked its way up to a half a bottle of red wine. And most recently, three quarters of a bottle. 
And that is when I got on my knees and I said, yo, what's up with this? <laughs> I know for a fact that I have an addictive personality. I get addicted to things. It's just in my makeup. People, habits, routines, food, sugar, alcohol. And so what was revealed to me was you have to stop being helpless. And I'm gonna tell you, I wanna bust a myth here. I don't have anything to drink about. My dad drank because he couldn't manage life. I have a great life. I have a great husband. I have a great business. I have a, a healthy, beautiful family. I don't have anything to drink about. So I wanna bust that myth. We don't necessarily drink because we're drinking about something. But what I do know is that I was drinking or am drinking because I had the habit loop installed, right? So it gets to be five o'clock. I held off because you know the old saying, it's five o'clock somewhere, okay? But I said, nope, an alcoholic would say that. So I waited till six o'clock, right? Now, I want you to understand, I wasn't running to the bottle at six o'clock. It was like, mm, six o'clock, I'll have a drink. Nothing about me would say, whoa, she's a lush, right? Nothing. But here's what the angel said to me. If you are constantly asking yourself and doing Google searches on do I have a drinking problem, you probably have a drinking problem. So here I am. Now, you're on this journey with me, okay? I'm being transparent. I'm being vulnerable. I'll keep you posted. I've committed to diving into this head first, just like I did with my sugar and clearing up my diabetes. I will not succumb to this. I will not play the victim. I will not present as helpless. It's just not in my DNA. So I felt I needed to say that because now I'm going to share the message. I'm going to put my glasses on because I wrote it down so that I didn't miss anything. So here is the message from Spirit. And this is your divine download. Now remember, as I always tell you, what do I say? One size does not fit all. You may take a piece of this or you may not. That's totally up to you. This week, we'll have an emergence of self-doubt, the inner critic, and you will tend to ignore the call. The signs will be there, but you will ignore the call if you choose to. This week is all about deep reflection and self-evaluation. Now I wanna pause here for a moment. Imagine this, I went to the angels and I laid out essentially what I told you and this was the download that they led me to. So, through meditation and quiet contemplation, you will become aware of the theme weaving throughout your life. Creating this awareness will offer you the opportunity to make necessary adjustments or eliminations. You have free will, the choice is yours. Don't be surprised that what is revealed to you during this downtime of deep introspection, we know 
that this could potentially cause embarrassment, judgment, and resignation. We can also tell you this, the foundation of your fear of getting close to this is about being judged by others. But we assure you, you are your own worst critic. Clearing your energy requires total honesty and commitment to self-forgiveness, self-acceptance, self-love, and through that, you will experience release and freedom. We are here to help you through this transition. We, your angels, are constantly nudging you, guiding you, leaving clues. Our messages are crystal clear to anyone who chooses to see them. Your very own fear of sacrifice, sacrifice of the familiar, is all that's holding you back. We also know that you are doing your very best to pretend that you are not receiving our messages. You're carrying on with everyday life, hoping it will just go away. But let's be honest for a minute. You know our call our nudge will never go away. It just gets louder and louder until you pay attention to it. We hold your hand as you push past your inner fear and self-doubt. This constant nudging is the sign that you've been asking for. You will have to battle your inner critic to hear us. To overcome your inner critic, we invite you to see it as a separate part of you. Give it a name, place it over here, acknowledge it, and converse with it. Just listen to it. Once you begin to really hear your inner critic, we, along with your intellect, will help you break the cycle of the inner critic. And you will be able to find much more positive messaging with us and your intellect. So that concludes the download that was given to me. Now, I know specifically what it meant for me. You will have to decipher what it means for you. Now, I want to share something else with you quickly. I am hosting this coming Wednesday, May 20, I think it's the 27th, uh, free master classes. You don't have to do anything except register. And I'm going to tell you, I call them a boutique series. And the reason I'm choosing the word boutique is because it's a very specialized, very intimate series of classes based on what you most need. These will be highly interactive. I've gotten hundreds of questions from you already, and I will be providing answers along with the angels, the guides, and higher self. So if learning Spirit communication is something that you are interested in. Please register using the link below and join me. They're free. You have nothing to lose. All right, I will see you in class.